saying from coach, and then we'll open up for questions. Uh, again, I played a really good team. Did not play well. I thought our effort down the stretch, I thought the guys stayed. Uh, the way we were covering kicks, trying to fight in the fourth quarter to get in the end zone to get off, make some stops. I appreciated the effort much better than the last game, the way we finished. Um, do need to play a lot better. And uh, you know, I do think we did play a very good team, so i got to credit uh, SMU uh, for being very good. I uh, know that for a fact. And those, uh, I was riding, look, riding the bus out looking at the defense. All those three running backs we offered at Ohio State. So they got some pretty good players. they got a really good team. Credit those guys. But we got to play better. Uh, we got to quit turning the ball over. we got to get some stops. Um, I do think the effort, the fight, I think the, the, the chemistry of the guys has still been very good. So like our group, appreciate our group. Want to finish good. Got a tough match this, this week with Charlotte's playing really good defense. They kind of play a ball control offensive game to minimize snaps. And, uh, you know, first year, and they've had their ups and downs, I guess, like all of us. But, uh, but they're playing good football, you know, and they're playing really good defense. So it'll be a, a very uh, strong test on homecoming. Weather's going to be good. And, you know, we'll have a lot of uh, uh, people that love our school back, a lot of former players who want to have a good week. Uh, one for those guys, but really want to have a good week again if I keep going back to our seniors. Got a good group of guys, need to finish strong as we wrap up these four weeks, trying to fight to stay in bowl contention and keep it going. With November being tomorrow, what do you want to accomplish in this last month of the season? Well, you know, I thought, you know, we managed uh, the first of the season with different situations with opponents or travel or, or heat or whatever and had some positive mojo. We didn't manage October very well at all. You know, we didn't score a lot of points in that month. We uh, had some injuries and things, so we've had a few little setbacks we got to overcome. Um, played three games and, and uh, had a close one. Played a, uh, with some turnovers at decent half. Our last six quarters haven't been good. Uh, again, I did, do think we did play two decent teams. I think SMU is really a, a strong team. So i got to credit those guys. But we need to play better. Um, I don't sit here and compare ourselves to anyone else. Just we have to do better. Just what we got to do to win. You can say, well, look who you're playing. What do the odds look like? Well, if you turn the ball over like we've been doing the first quarter, the odds don't look good no matter who you're playing. Uh, if we don't uh, make some tackles and get some third down stops and get off the field, it doesn't look good no matter who you're playing. Um, so again, we've got, we've, we, we need to improve. We want to see us improve. Um, again, we've got, I told our group, I, I keep genuinely, genuinely uh, really like and our guys and being around them and practice. And that being said, if it is a good group of guys, they'll be good this month and they'll keep a good attitude and they'll keep working together and they'll keep wanting to be getting coached and the coaches will work with them and collectively we'll work hard to stay together and finish strong. If we finish strong, we've got a chance to, to finish on a good uptick for some great seniors and great kids and that's what we want to do. And um, from that then you build momentum and you worry about next year when it's next year. But we need to finish uh, thought we had a good, you know, good vibe on Sunday. The weather was such, um, uh, with the cold and rain, we just did some, some light work and, and didn't really get on the field. But we will get out today and tomorrow and have two good days of prep and polish up for the game Saturday. Is that kind of what was said on Saturday after the game in the locker room? You know, what was that kind of like, you know, talking to the guys? going up well, the You know, even at halftime, we, if you want to sit here and start second guessing yourself or a call or a teammate, that's not that's not going to lead to any good. So let's you know we've 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 been with our group from the very first meeting. We said, hey, press pause, take a deep breath, let's keep working, let's stay together, let's fight together, let's do that. So we started that again at halftime, play one play at a time, let's play as hard as we can. I did I did think we we came out we can play better, but I thought our guys were fighting. I thought they were trying to get in the end zone. I thought they were covering some kicks with good effort. So I, even though the score got out of hand, uh, even though they they took their foot off the accelerator, yes. Uh, I didn't think our guys were just going through the motions trying to get through it. I thought we came in Sunday, and again, we just, you know, hey, here's the week, here's the plan, here's the teams we're playing, here's what we got to do this week, getting ready for it. We'll start the preparation today, but thought again with the meeting, the vibe, the communication. Seeing a lot of guys yesterday, it's our off day. A lot of guys will pop in the office, watch a little tape on their own, get some treatment on their own. The guys look like they're in good spirits, and we need to be. We get a good group of guys, but if you are good, you handle adversity, you handle setbacks. You stay together, stay strong. If not, it's all talk. So we'll see what we're about down the stretch. And whether it equates to victory, it gives us our best chance for victory. And we're going to work well as best we can, have four really good weeks and stack up one day at a time, one week at a time, and see what holds us Saturday for homecoming. You kind of mentioned last week that after watching the film on Rice that the watching film and meetings were productive. Having that kind of back-to-back -back big losses, was it the same watching this kind of film? and these? these yeah, movies? this one, though, because, again, I, again, I just – Wanted to do that last game. I didn't like our, our effort at the end of the game. 
against Rice. Again, I thought even though the score what was wasn't near as good, I, I thought they were we were fighting. We were fighting. We were coming off the ball. We were running hard. We were, you know, trying to compete to get open. I think we could firm our protections up a little bit better. I think we can get off blocks better. But our guys were we weren't just jogging around. They were trying to get off the blocks, make the tackles, cover the guys, get them down, covering kicks. So to me, we just came in and talked about listen, the score is not near what you want and it looks bad. But if you sit there and watch your effort and what you did, I can live with that. Let's make sure we get better. And that means this week now, uh, we need to be smart with our volume of work because um, it is the time of year where, again, you do have a number of hits on guys and build up. But we, we need to get better. So there's a fine line between practicing, practicing hard and wearing guys out and, quote, making your point. But the point is we need to play better. So we need to block better. We need to tackle better. But how do we do that when you're now, basically, we're starting our fourth month of football? And how do you do that with the contact we've had that we can fundamentally improve because we need to, schematically improve because we need to, and at the same time not wear our team out because we need to be fast and we need to be fresh to play well Saturday. So, you know, this was a, a quick address of the group, uh, turned it into let the kicking guys go, let the position guys handle it. We had uh, a light workout to break a sweat, get the soreness out, and then we got into some inter introductory um, uh, walkthroughs of what we want to do with the weather. It was cold, it was rainy. So we were going to go out and be miserable today. We've got a brisk day, but a beautiful day. We'll have a good practice day and see where we're at and set a good tone for moving forward. We're not going to go and just smash heads and have some four-hour practice day because we played bad. We're going to correct the mistakes. We're going to put our plan together. We're going to make sure they understand our plan. And we're going to start doing everything we can to implement it and see if we can execute it better on Saturday. And obviously, five losses, six is the threshold for bowl games. Do you all talk about that at all? And how, if you do, how do you make sure you're not putting so much pressure on the guys that they're not trying to overwhelm themselves for one of these games? Well, I mean, all we talk about is that to get there, you got to get the six, and your margin of error is now thinner. So, you know, e each loss it adds up quickly, quickly and, 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 and makes your chances, quote, hard, harder. Um, but we did say, hey, you got four games left, and, and six is number to be a bold team, and we'd love to spend one more month with this team together. You know, football seasons are, um, uh, are, are short. And they're, they're terminal, and they leave, and it's a new team, and, and guys move on. And so for us, we don't want it to end. You want it to go as long as you can. It is, like I say, we, we, we do have a good group that does a great job practicing, working together. We need to play well together, win games. We'll see if we can get that done this week. And we'd like to do it so we can extend our time together and have those experiences and, and give them a great bowl opportunity. But the main thing this week is have a good Tuesday today. Thought we came back. Have, we've had a short start. Not a lot of work yet. It starts this afternoon. We'll see if we can have a good week and, and just get as close as we can. Let's find the next victory and move from there. And whatever happens, we'll have to do it again. Piggybacking off uh, Dan's question, having that bowl eligibility still up on the board, you talked about the players' attitudes and, and morale still being good. Does it help with that and motivation that that goal is still up there? I, I think so, but I, I don't – like I said, I'm not trying to pound it like we got to do it, you know, and, and – and, they're, they're like uh, we told me today, like you know, you're good enough. You you quote deserve it, but nothing's deserved. You have to earn it, and that means you need to, to take care of yourself and practice well and get the treatment you need and make sure you're you're in class and living right and doing right. And then we got to go out there and play right. So even though it'd be great and it's something like you're good enough, guys, this would be awesome for you to get. You got to go get it. You can't lose it. That's why I don't think you can put. There's no need to put pressure on yourself. You've never had it, so you can't lose what you don't have. You need to go obtain it. You need to go get it. So that being said, let's have a good week and go get victory versus, okay, look, you know, here, here's what we're losing. No, here's, here's what's happened. We can't change what's happened. We can look and try to correct and, and correct mistakes and do things better. And if we're good teams and good coaches, and we need to coach as better as we need to play better. So let's make sure, again, you take complete ownership across the board, all, all parties, all hands on deck. But let, let, let's, it, it, I guess it's motivation. It's there. But my motivation from the start, it's constant, consistent improvement. Let's have a good day. Let's have a good week. Let's get this one. If mathematically those numbers go against us in time, they do. As long as we're there, I guess we can say it's some external motivation to look at. But I don't pound it as much as let's have a good week and let's get there. If, if we're these good guys we talk about, let's, let's be good together. Let's work our butt off together and have a good week and go find a victory. Now, now coming off a loss like you just had it in this losing streak, do you go in there, do you make big changes on personnel or scheme or anything, or are you just kind of hammer home your, your fundamentals and, and how you do what you do? A little bit like last week, I, I, I felt with the effort and things that we, we, we did try to dial back and get into some fundamental, you know, whether it be coming off the ball or route depth or getting off blocks defensively or whatever. And we still need to be so much better at so many of those things. 
So you stay with the fundamental piece. But you're at a time of the year, some of the fundamentals need to come in team time because you can't have an extended amount of team practice and then, excuse me, individual practice and then an extended amount of period of team because the volume adds up with the wear and tear on the guy's body. So a part of the fundamental work needs to be done during scheme time. Now, the only thing I will say, I've asked our guys on both sides of the ball to just make sure the schemes we're doing, we can try our darndest to carry them forward, that we're not grab bagging and hodgepodge and collecting a group of plays or defensive schemes or coverages or blitzes this week. And then it's something completely new next week. When you're not playing well, you don't need to simplify, but you also need to make sure they're not thinking so much they can't play fast. They can't be aggressive and they can't be confident. So coaching's a part of that, but sometimes we can overcoach. Well, let's run this play. Let's run this blitz. Let's do this new punt formation. Well, there's there's time for that. And there's right now there's time that we're doing that. But I've asked our coaches to make sure we have a four week window that things we're always doing are carrying over. So all of a sudden it's not you know, it's been like with the quarterback. All of a sudden, it's this one and that one. And what's your consistency and what's your continuity? It's the same thing, you know, as we're, you know, like, what are you doing right now? Well, let's just make sure there is some, some continuity so we can grow these last four weeks and play our best these last four weeks. So there's a little bit of scheme, a little bit of personnel, but really just collectively group. Let's make sure that, that we can repeat it and do it over and over the best we can for four weeks. We still got to attack the defense. We still got to stop the offense. It's College football is different. Each week's a different offensive package. You know, uh, NFL and the NFL is getting away because of the college mode. But it used to be like, you know, one week you're seeing a running team, a spread team, a quarterback run, a, a no huddle team. I mean, you know, de defensive football is very, very challenging, you know, for our defensive coaches. So, you know, as those guys look to find answers, I'm asking them, not being a defensive guy, please try to find them, but give our players a chance to know what they're doing in play fast. That's don't overcoach. We need to coach better, but we don't need to overcoach for sure. Coach, you've mentioned Kirk Francis's name multiple times throughout this season. Who's that? Kirk Francis. Yeah, okay. Um, what are the chances we see him play um, knowing there's four games or maybe five left? Yeah, I mean, guys like that, in, you know, uh, looking back, I mean, there's a couple of our guys. Uh, first of all, Kirk can play and not lose his red shirt because he hasn't played. And the rule is you can play in four, and if you get to a bowl game, you can play in the bowl game as a fifth one because the bowl game doesn't count as a part of your red shirt year. Uh, so guys like he that haven't played. Now, we do have some guys that have played in three or four games to say, now, Coach, if I'm not playing much, I'd really like to be redshirted. And as a dad, as a dad has a kid playing, and as a coach, and I'm sitting there saying, hey, like, like, if you're not going to use this kid a lot, I agree. And so, you know, going forward, I like the fact that we've actually saved Kurt, and I think we'll use him this week at all. Sometimes I wish right now maybe I'd have saved some of his early, earlier freshmen to the end. Because as you have injury, I think initially my thought was, hey, the more these guys play, the better they'll do, the more exciting. Then as the season went along, you get some close games, get some games you're not playing well. Some of those freshmen didn't get their plays, but now they've played a few games. And they're like, well, shucks, I haven't played that much. I want to be redshirted. I'm like, hey, we got a couple injuries. I kind of need you. But I'm not going to cross what you and your family think because I agree with where you're coming from. I got to do what's best for the team. I got to do what's best for you. And so going forward, in years to come, I think I need to be a little bit more calculated with our depth that I wish I had a few more guys like Kirk that had a couple more days in their in their back pocket I could pull out. Right now, i got a couple guys that, you know, C.J. Turner's coming off an injury. I don't know if he's going to be ready to play. He's close. He's playing four games. As soon as he plays one play, that's his, his red shirt's gone. I don't know if I want that. And so those are decisions that, as coaches, we, we see. But, you know, Kirk, I guess, you know, I still want to – I, I just don't want a revolving door there. I need I need I need uh, uh, Braylon and Cardell to play better for the most part. Uh, but I do I do like the progress and what Kirk has shown, and he's got a he's got a chance to be a good player. I believe. Uh, Coach, uh, if you sense that your players are recovering, if that's even a word, uh, from this last couple of weeks in a pretty good way, what about you? I mean, this is such a departure from what you've been accustomed to for you know so many years. I mean, like like. At this time, typically, your your biggest question was, are we going to be two or three in the playoff rankings, right, at Ohio State? Yeah. And, and so and how, how, are, how are you, we, how are you doing those building this? years at IU, and I, I was through that. And as, a, as a younger guy, you know, you take it personal because you want to make sure, first of all, I was always taught that when you point a finger, there's three coming back at you. So you need to, you know, point a thumb. So I always look at, like, at things are that what, 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 what can I do better? You know, and, and that doesn't always mess. I mean, working harder, long, but we'll make sure. Am I? Are we planning practice properly? Am I? Am I conveying to the team properly? Are we? You know, what are we doing at? And 
you know, I think as a as an older person that's that you know didn't necessarily quote have to be here but wanted to be here, but it's not trying to leave to get out of here. It's not like I feel like okay I want to build, but I want to build first for a good group of seniors, because as I've been around these guys as they chose to stay, I really embraced them and I thought they embraced us, and that's why I think there's been really good continued karma to some degree in chemistry. Now, is there frustration and some negativity? Yeah, because nobody likes it. But I think we got a good group of kids that like themselves. And I think we're trying to teach them, again, how we want to play and like that. And that being said, I thought we did a good job when we started of educating what we want to do. So I, I didn't come in and blow them up. I didn't blow them up at halftime or after the game. I was very direct. Now, look, you got to stay together. you got to believe it. Zero, zero, play the first play, play the first possession, play the first quarter. Okay, now come in, let's, let's see this. What can we correct? If we're good guys, let's all work together. I'm not going to sit there. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to try my darnest. I'm going to say, I have to coach better. But I hope you will be man enough to look at some things you can correct. Can you practice play better? And if we all work together, we'll have a better week. So I think being a little bit older, uh, you take it personal because it is your, quote, your team, I guess, and you're responsible and the buck stops at me. So you don't point fingers. So you take it personal. But I don't sit here and I'm not beating myself up because much like, I guess, because I'm older, I don't think I'm losing what I never had. I think when you're young, you're trying to, hey, what can you get to? You know, you're, yeah, you're about to get, hey, what, you know, hey what's, what, what can we do? What's my next? What's the next? What's next? What's next? To me, like, what's next is how do we have a better day and a better week and win this week for this team? And I think I've been more engulfed with the team. So um, even though I don't like it, I, don't, I think it's been much easier for me to be positive and to have direction. And hopefully our guys remember right now, again, Six, uh, leadership and, and, and as, much, as much coupled with performance. So as I can get our team to perform better, hopefully the buy-in will be stronger. Uh, as they play better, hopefully their confidence grows. Uh, but at the same time, as I've said, they're quarterbacks. When you're not playing well, I think we got to play our way out of the muck and we got to fight through it. And the best way to do it is to do it together instead of casting stones. Was there a little part of you Saturday that just wanted to go in at half and just throw a chair through a window and just and then walk back out? No. Or is that, or was that ever part of what your reaction might have been? Uh, Years ago, I'd have done that in a heartbeat. <laughs> the other day I went in, I went to both because the locker room was kind of split off his defense. And I was like, hey, man, we need to stay together. And you're a great group of guys, but you already got to trust yourself, trust the player beside you, trust the coach, and let's go play the first play. And let's just go as hard as we can play. If we can't change anything, it's happened. I don't like what's happened. But right now, we're going to go get some plays that we like. We'll figure out what's going on. Maybe we didn't plan it as well as we should have. Maybe we should have done some things schematically to help you. But we can't be a revolving door with players. We can't be a revolving door with scheme. we got to hang our hat somewhere. And that's what I've, I've challenged myself and the coaches do, is to make sure as we plan this week for this game, we're planning ourselves to give ourselves some consistency and continuity for four weeks to improve and chase victory as best we can. So do you think, I mean, because most of your guys are 19 or 20, and do you think they're one really good performance and a great outcome away from being right back where you were a month ago? It would help. Now, at the, at, the, at, the, at the same time, we got a bunch of 22 and 23 year olds too now. So we got some, I think we got 40, 40 guys that are fourth, fifth, and sixth year seniors or can graduate. So there's, there's, there, there, there's a fair, fair amount of old guys. So, and that's why, again, I, I spend as much as my time directing conversations to those guys because that's the bulk of our team and some of our players, some of the guys that play a lot. With the young players I talk about, you need to make sure you're practicing one, getting better, whether you're a guy that we're red shirting or a guy playing a little bit with the, I, you know, to me, we, 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 we have an older crowd. And uh, I mean, victory's going to help, but victory's not easy. Uh, I don't think there's pressure. Like, we got to win. We got to be a bowl. We gotta, no, we need to have a great day. That's our deal. Constant, consistent, daily improvement. Let's have a good day. Let's improve. Let's keep working together. I like the way we practice. Maybe I'm full of myself with what I think I'm seeing. I don't like the last, basically, the last six quarters. Uh, I will give a lot of credit to teams that have have some veteran quarterbacks and veteran skill and are playing good. So we got to get to that point. We got to enhance our roster. But the first way to enhance ourselves right now is to stay together and have a plan and work together to win this game. That's you're always trying to make yourself better. So we'll have, you know, out of season player enhancement, out of season recruiting. Right now it's in season. How do we make this week good to, get to, to find a, um, give ourselves a chance to play well and, and see if we can get it done on Saturday? How do you think playing at home, especially like a game during homecoming affects kind of like the mindset or the vibe of the team going into it? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I think every place is different. I know right here we have a lot of activities. We have our, a lot of former players back for some outings, and we'll be around us a little bit on Saturday. 
you know, we have a bonfire that we participate in, but I think some of that, I mean, to me, like I told the guys yesterday, I mean, in our world, homecoming sucks if you don't win the game. You know, the parties are better, the tailgating's better, everything's better if you don't win. So, I mean, you know, bowl games are only good when you win the game. You know, it's not the bowl trip, it's winning the game. That's what you remember. So, in our world, it's homecoming's great. Uh, I, I have relayed a lot of messages uh, from, from former players and alumni that have hit me the last few weeks about, you know, hey, work together, hang in there, be positive. And I keep saying it because there's a lot of people watching us. We have a lot of people coming back. And this school's had a lot of tradition. They're going to expect us to play well. And we need to play well. Because first of all, we need to play well for ourselves and our families and our team, but we need to play well for the school and the alumni. So we're going to do everything we can for our former players and, and for the alums. It's great. Hopefully we'll have a great crowd. Uh, I know there's some great activities. We've had some really good crowds this year. I know weather's going to be good. So we look forward to having a good crowd. And we look forward to seeing if we can play our best for, uh, for our fans this week. Uh, one more thing. Um, I know Charlotte suspended some of its players for conduct. Can you just kind of talk about, like, to you and your sportsmanship and, like, how you've kind of fostered that environment? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just – I mean, I've had a couple issues this year. Some guys, I saw some things, you know, during the game. Like, hey, we you know, but we had, we had a, an unsportsmanlike penalty Saturday that should have been called. It was a poor play where a guy got a little too emotional and took kind of a cheap hit on the guy. It's not a part of the game. And so um, we've had some issues in practice where, you know, a guy wants to – to me, cross the line, and and we one corrected immediately, and two we say it doesn't go forward. I mean, there's a way to. You know, at the same time, I mean, emotions can flare. You got, you got, you, you got to make sure that you play with emotion, but you don't let your emotions play with you, and that's it's a part of maturity. And you know, I you know, uh, I, I like our guys to play harder than we're playing. I still like for us to even control ourselves better than we're doing. I I think we're making strides, but I'd like to see our guys continue to to play the game the way it needs to be played. I think we're gaining on it, but. Uh, uh, it's a work in progress for sure. And uh, talking a bit about receiver, um, <clears throat> I know losing shoulders has been has, has been tough for you guys. But um, talk about guys who need to step up um, and how you move them forward. Yeah, I, um, you know Devin's uh, made some plays. Uh, Devin Williams, Carl Chester's came on a little bit. Cam Benjamin's probably been our, our most consistent, and he's an older guy. He'll he'll actually graduate. Uh, December with his masters. I think he has, actually has another, he'll get an MBA in December. So if he wants to come back, he would actually be a, a second degree master kid. So he's been very well. Got to get Presley going a little bit. Got to find some way to get him in the ball a little bit. Um, been a little inconsistent in practice. Just like to see him continue to grow. He's a dynamic player, but just hasn't, you know, hadn't caught it well a couple times and, and not mad at him. I think he's a, I got I, I to get that guy going. He's a good player. Um, we need Nick Rimpert and, and Carl Chester to compliment that crowd a little bit. We need the tight ends to keep complimenting a little bit. Um, and we'll work hard this week. We've got, to, we've got to find a way to – can't score one touchdown a game and win games. And it's hard for the running back and even the quarterback. When you're running, there's seven, eight, nine, ten guys, eyes on the ball. That One of the best ways to score is those receivers with the one-on-one -on -one play. So we need, to, we need to find a way to do that. And Charlotte's very good on defense, so it's going to be a challenge this week to get that done. But we're going to – we need, and not only the receivers to, to step up, but our protection needs to step up. You know, a lot of times you know, we're running the ball and haven't blocked it nearly as well as I'd like to see us these last couple weeks. So when you say, how's November going to be? Hopefully we're going to come off the ball and block a little bit better this, this last month. So, because uh, we're getting the third and long too short, when we drop back the pass, it's like it's second half, two seconds, there's a guy in his face, just start scrambling around. So we need to clean up our passing game. It's not very good right now. And it's not just quarterback. It's a quarterback. It's a group effort. So the re... The reason it hasn't clicked yet for Braylon Presley, is it more related to his hands, the physicality of college football? Um, I mean, it would be silly. I, it would feel silly to ask about if he's had a problem with the speed of it because of the kind of athlete he is. But yeah, why I, I think, hasn't it clicked for him yet here? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know, getting, getting comfortable with the receiver. Maybe it's sometimes maybe the things we're asking him to do. And maybe that's why I'm trying to look at some things doing. Try, can we, can we? Can we, can we, how can we get him the ball? Because he is dynamic with the ball in space. But again, it's a smaller guy now. There's been some times where, you know, his size, you can see that a little bit. You know, he's, he's a fast guy. But like some of our guys, I mean, I, I think when I got here, it's one of the things I keep telling our guys as a skilled player, you need to be bigger and stronger. We played against some big skilled players Saturday. And that's why with our defensive backs, I keep saying, like, you know, mid, mid, you got to find 180, 85 pounds, eat a little bit more, get stronger. So I, I think that's what Brian, a little bit of confidence with, with, with the, with, with the size, a little self-confidence. Um, as because again, he showed up at 149 pounds. That's what he was day one. Now he's he's about 165 right now. So we're gaining, 
But with that, with strength, with size, comes confidence, comes maturity. And But he is a dynamic player. He's a great kid. He's one of them guys from Bixby that a lot of people out here in this they either love or hate, that's for sure. And we wish all the high school teams well as they wrap up and get into, into their playoffs, getting ready to start. So, um, uh, But we, we need to get him going. We need to get a lot of guys going. Uh, but we're going to do that again through um, as hard as we're going to work, we're going to channel everything we can to be positive and keep this team moving in a great way. Thanks, guys. Thanks.